We drummers often get hung up on what kind of bass drum beater should we use for a certain song. But does this really matter and can the audience even tell a difference? We're gonna run a couple tests to find out and we're also gonna look at a special recording situation that actually depends heavily on bass drum beater type. You won't wanna miss this. Hey everybody, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Now let's head down to the kit for some bass drum beater comparison. So there's really only three different beaters that we're gonna test today, and one of them is a two-sided one, of course. We gotta test the felt versus the plastic side. I also have this Vader Bomber B Bomber B Beater. Bomber Beater. Vader Bomber Beater, this wool, and I've noticed over time it's gotten a little bit harder as it's been worn down. If I were to buy a new one right now, that new one would be softer than this one. Just to give you the warning that it might not sound like a brand new one would. But if I am playing heavier, I am playing a um, you know a heavier, louder rim shots on the snare, pretty heavy kick, rock sort of gig. I will use the felt side of this beater because this beater is heavier. I've got a lot more weight, and so it gives me more, more volume more easily than this one does. But I like the sound and the tone of this one, but I can get better volume with this one. I've also occasionally used the plastic side of this when maybe the front of house guy has said, hey, we need a little bit more attack, just as much attack and punch as you can give us. Listen to these three different beaters and see if we can hear a difference because we drummers, you know, we, we make a big deal over these things, these little gear choices like, oh, well, this beater feels this way, this beater feels this way. A lot of times they'll all feel different. And so to us as the player, it can be a world of difference playing with a beater like this that's lighter and softer versus one that's harder and heavier. But to the listener, to the audience, or even to the microphones, is there actually a difference? That's what we want to find out. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to listen to some different combinations of the mics. We're definitely going to listen to all the mics together. We'll solo probably the overheads, maybe the room mics. And then at the end, we're going to try something different, a different miking scenario that might really bring out the difference in beater type. It'll be pretty interesting. you probably could not tell a difference between any of the beater types when listening to all the mics together because there was a lot of the external kick mic that's providing a lot of that low end. And even the Beta 52 inside the kick is not picking up a ton of the differences in attack variations. So as far as close mics go, with maybe a little bit of overhead, a little bit of room, 
there probably wasn't a noticeable difference. You might have noticed a volume difference because naturally the heavier beater is louder and it probably got louder when I buried it also. And you could hear those differences between unburied and buried at first. But in just listening to the overheads, you probably did notice more of a difference because the overheads are picking up a lot more of the attack from the kick and less of the body. So when you begin to pull in the, the kick close mics, then it kind of starts to mask what you're hearing from the overheads. But now I wanna to listen to one other microphone that I put in a different spot that I haven't done before in a video, I don't think. I don't know if you noticed, but my Rackton mic is not here because I moved it down here underneath. I have it pointed kind of up at the underside of the snare, sort of at the front of the kick or the back of the kick, however you wanna think about it. Basically that mic, it's also a 57, it's just there to add attack. It's gonna bring in a lot of grit and um, you know, some uh, sizzle from the snare because it's pointing at the underside of the snare, but it's also gonna pick up much more of the batter head sound from the kick drum. So we'll have that to mix in with what, what's already going on. I hope this video helped you out and provided you with something valuable or at least interesting to try out in your playing. If so, be sure to share the video and become a fellow non-glamorous subscriber if you haven't already. Take care guys and I will see you on the next video.